Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how to configure the high speed counter in a Compact Logix PLC to do some basic motion control. We're going to be using our industrial control panel trainer with the HMI option. And in our previous video, we showed how to connect the PLC Tools SIM S24 servo simulator so we could get some simulated motion. And we also made a video to give us a graphical indicator of the movement that we're seeing. So in this video, we're gonna go through how to set up some real basic motion in Studio 5000. So we're gonna create a new program and we're gonna be using a 1769-L24ER-QBFC1B. So we'll select it and let's just call this our motion control. And we'll hit next and finish. And then we're gonna open up our controller tags and we're gonna create two tags. So go to the edit tag tab and let's create rotary position. And it's gonna be a real and linear position. And it's also gonna be a real. And those are mainly just to communicate with our HMI. They're not actually required for the high speed counter setup. But now let's go to our embedded counters. And let's go to our counter configuration. And we're going to have a basic ring counter. Now to start with, we're going to do a rotary position encoder. So we're really going to be concerned with zero to 360 degrees, or in our case, the encoder counts will be 0 to 1023, which is a 1024 count encoder. Now on an encoder, you have an A channel, a B channel, and a Z channel. And I have a video that goes through how those work, but the A and the B are used to figure that position around the encoder. And then the Z marker happens one time per revolution. So we can use that to zero our encoder every time. If you want to do that, then over here in storage mode, you see preset on rising Z. And what that's going to do is it's going to put our preset, which right now is zero, into our accumulated position each time that that Z marker rises. And then for our operating mode here, we want to select encoder X4, which will be a quadrature encoder. And that's the bare configuration we need for our high-speed counter. So let's go ahead and click OK on it. And then in our previous video, we also connected the analog command for our servo simulator to our analog output zero. So on the left pane, let's open up our embedded analog I.O. and then go to our output configuration. And it's defaulting here to minus 10 volt to plus 10 volt, which is what we want, but we need to check that enable box. And then let's also change our data format to engineering units, because that's gonna make it a little easier for us to figure out. Mainly minus 10,000 will be minus 10 volt, and plus 10,000 will be plus 10 volt. Now, we're gonna hit the apply button here, but we are gonna get an error. But go ahead and hit the apply button. And we do, we get failed to modify module properties, the high clamp value over range value 32764, maximum value 10,500. Our high clamp value now needs to be 10,500 and our low clamp value needs to be minus 10,500. So we'll hit okay to that. And then let's go ahead and download this program. We're not quite there yet, but this is a good start. If you need any help downloading your program or configuring drivers or anything like that in Studio 5000, look down in the description. We have lessons on how to do all that for the Control Logix and the Compact Logix PLC. Then make sure you put your PLC back into run mode. And let's go to controller tags and let's go to the monitor tag tab and open up our local colon three colon I. Now it's not gonna work yet, but I just wanna make sure we see this. That way when you run across it, it'll hopefully jog in your memory exactly what's going on. Is if we look right now at local colon three colon I input state A and B, we're gonna see we're getting some ones and zeros. 
But if we scroll down to our current count, it is zero. And our store count is zero and our current rate is zero. And the reason for that is we need to enable our counter. And to do that, let's scroll on down to local colon three colon O for the outputs. And then let's find CTR zero EN. And that's gonna be the enable for this. So let's put a one in there. And that's gonna enable our counter. Now let's scroll up and look at our current count. And you can see our value is changing. Now, our value is changing, but we have a zero analog signal going to it. Well, if this was a true motion controller, it would be monitoring this A and B, and it would be adjusting that analog value to make it stand still. As is, we're calling it zero, but even if I grab a voltmeter, and I set my voltmeter, actually let's set it to the two volt scale because we should be at zero. And I'm gonna take my red lead on our analog input and my black lead on the common. And we actually have 0 0.014 volts on it. So that is causing this encoder to slowly drift. And that's what you're seeing here in our current count where it is kind of slowly going up. So we're gonna do two things to help that out. First of all, we're gonna add an offset into our PLC program to kind of get that zero where it should be. But even then, if we have it near perfect zero, a motion controller, if it sees any wiggle on that analog signal, it's, that encoder is gonna move. So inside of our servo simulator, we also have a dead band jumper that we can use. And on a motion control application, you won't need it. But in this application where we're really doing more of positioning with a high-speed counter and analog, it can be very useful. If you look at the servo simulator, there's a slot on both sides of the front cover. And if you'll stick a terminal block screwdriver in there, you can pop that off. And if we look inside, right there is the dead band jumper. And if I install a jumper across that, then that's gonna enable the dead band filter on our servo simulator. All right, so the dead band jumper definitely slowed down the amount of change we're getting, but we're still getting some. So we need to get this to where it's not moving at all. So it's going in the negative direction. So let's start by adding a positive offset to our analog signal until we're not getting any movement out of it. So let's go up to local colon two colon O. That's going to be our analog output. And then channel zero data. And let's just start with putting 10 in there. Let's just see where we get at. Now if we go down, eh, we're still moving some. So let's go up and let's change it to 20. Okay, now we're sitting close to still. Now, first of all, I don't want to sit here and scroll up and down to do this anymore. So I'm going to highlight this current count and I'm going to copy it. And then let's go up to view and let's go to watch. And we'll drag that up and let's just paste that in. All right, so now we can see our current count value. Now let's go up and grab that analog value. And we'll put it in there too. All right, so at 20, we're pretty close to not moving. In fact, I think we've moved four counts since we started the watch window. So first, let's bring that down to say 18. Just wanna see it start to move. All right, it's moving some there. We saw it move a little bit. So 18, it's definitely slightly going down. So now let's find where it slightly goes up. So let's make this 25. Okay, 25, it doesn't move. Let's go to 30. So 30, it definitely starts moving up. 28, okay, 28, it's not climbing. 29, it's not climbing. 30, all right, 30, we definitely start. If we take 29 and 18 and find the midpoint of those two, that's probably gonna be a good offset. So 29 minus 18 
divided by 2. It's going to be roughly, let's call it 6. So 6 plus 18, we're going to be 24. So if we put this at 24, then that's going to be a good zero point to keep our servo from moving. Now, honestly, this analog module probably needs calibrated is all that it is, but let's say we couldn't, then this is how you would do it. So now what I want to do is I want to create another tag and we're going to call this analog command and it's going to be a real and then let's also create an analog zero offset which is going to be a real now let's go to our main program and our main routine and we're going to put a compute instruction in so you you can either go and find it under the compute math tab or you can simply type cpt and that'll bring it up. Now our destination is going to be local colon two colon o dot ch zero data. And our value is going to be analog command plus analog zero offset. And we're going to put that in. And then let's go to that analog zero offset. And we want to make it 24 because that's what value we found left it right at zero. So now if we scroll down to that high speed counter value, then we can see it's sitting pretty well still, which is what we want. Now let's get to where we can see something. Because yeah, we're talking about all these values, but we need to see something on our screen here. Let's go back to our program and add another compute statement. And in this case, our destination is going to be our rotary position. And our value is going to be local colon three colon I. And let's scroll down and find the CT zero current count. And let's put that in there. Now on our screen, we're showing a little bit to the left of zero. And in our program, our current count is minus 19. So yeah, we are a little bit to the negative. Now let's actually make it move somewhere. So let's go, actually in our watch window, let's add that analog command. This watch window is a great thing. And in fact, we're kind of, we're really done with this analog channel data output now. So we can right click it and just delete it out of the way. And now we're looking at just what we have. And let's just put a value of 10 in. All right, and there you go. Now we're seeing the encoder wheel moving on our HMI. And we're also seeing our value going up and then resetting at 10,023. So this has given us a visual representation of an encoder rotating. So that gets us through the basics of giving an analog command to make our servo move. If we gave it a negative signal, it would move the other direction. So next, we're gonna talk about how to turn this into something linear, because typically you're not just gonna be looking at a motor spinning, it's going to actually make some type of motion, whether it be moving something point A to point B or something. That's what we're going to tackle in the next video. Again, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hey, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.